check this out. It's the brand new Elegoo Fakata. Fakata, I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but it's the new laser engraver by the folks over at Elegoo. Let's get this unboxed and see what it can do. And here's a better look at it, the new Elegoo Fecta laser engraver. This is my very first experience of working with any sort of laser engraver. And I have to say the overall process so far has been pretty straightforward and easy to follow. The assembly process for this aluminum framed engraver took all of 15 to 20 minutes and was pretty straightforward, just following the visual instructions inside Elegoo's manual. Now, just the other week, I did a live stream launch for Elegoo of the Fecta laser engraver which you'll find a link to up here in the corner if you didn't see that already where you can see me just playing around and doing some engraving live on the stream while they launched the unit over on Kickstarter and yeah Kickstarter I know I also brought that up to them the first time I heard about it and they explained that since this is their first time producing and trying to make a laser engraver they weren't entirely sure what the market interest would be in them producing this which is why they went that route before going full production swing on something like this and it looks like it's been pretty successful with almost 2 million in backing so far. So looking over the unit in the very front top right corner, you'll find a touchscreen interface that allows you to control all the basic functions of the laser engraver. And I'll be honest, I really haven't used that almost at all other than inputting in my wireless connection information, which by the way, yes, this has wireless connectivity, which is that little dongle there that you see on the bottom of the unit. And on the front right side of the engraver is where you're gonna find your power cable, along with the USB connection port that'll allow you to send your jobs directly from a computer to the engraver. There's also a slot for a micro SD card for onboard storage of any projects that you might have, as well as the on and off button. The Fecta also comes with a set of extension legs that are easily screwed on or off. And I've been working with those primarily throughout the entire time I've been using the unit, which just helps lift up the engraver a little bit higher off of your tabletop surface, depending on the projects that you're working on. You'll also find these orange acrylic protective panels on the front and back of the engraver. And the front ones here are magnetically attached that you can easily take off in case you needed to get in here and manually adjust the positioning of the engraver or adjust the focal distance to the actual object that you're about to engrave. One thing I did mention to Elgoo is it would be great if this UV panel could somehow be extended further down when working with the extension legs to help better cover up the laser when it's working on projects. On the top of the engraver, you're also gonna see this smoke filter exhaust system that works fairly well so far that I've seen. Uh, and you can easily open this up to get access to the filters so that if you needed to swap them out because they do get pretty dirty as you're working on your different projects. And speaking of the smoke, this little filter can only do so much. Make sure you're working in an extremely well ventilated area when operating any laser engraver. And the Fecta also includes these snazzy looking eye protective wear that you'll need to make sure that you're wearing anytime you're operating the laser engraver. And speaking of, this isn't like a 3D printer that you can start it and walk away. Anytime you are running a job on your engraver, you need to make sure that you are actively monitoring the project as it's engraving. This also has a 400 by 400 work area for your project. So you can engrave and cut some fairly large things that I'm excited to get up and running on this unit. Now I'm working with the 10 watt version of the Fecta and what's cool about this and the 20 watt version is that it has a focal position bar that you can flip down on top of the material that you're trying to engrave to make sure that the engraving head is in the correct focal distance from that particular object. I hope I am saying all of this correctly because I am so used to 3D printing things. These are all new terms to me and it's just a whole new learning experience. So apologies if I'm screwing any of this up. You'll also find two additional fans inside of the Fecta laser head box here. They're gonna help try and keep things cool as you're engraving projects. So before I show you some of the things that I've engraved and cut out, which to be honest are pretty basic, but I wanna to talk with you about the different software that you're gonna to need to run the engraver. Now, there is a free option called Laser Gerbil. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a free version of the software that comes with the engraver. And to be honest, I think I've only used it once. The primary engraving software that I'm using that I think almost everyone uses is Lightburn. And that software rocks. And I've barely scratched the surface of it. And so far it's really easy to use. Now it is a paid piece of software and it costs $60 for a license, but it's a one-time $60 license purchase and you can use that software 
forever. That's the path that I'm going to be going with. I think a majority of people also use light burn at this point. And again, so far that has been really easy to use and there is a ton of different functionality in it. And I love that it has a quick and easy way for me to run a whole bunch of different calibration tests on the different materials that I want to work with. Oh, there's also an iOS and Android mobile app that you can also use if you wanted to upload photos or pan draw something on your phone and then try and engrave that. It works okay. I honestly haven't done very much with it other than running a quick test with the mobile app. And if you're like me, the Fecta might also be your first laser engraver. And you might be wondering how exactly do you position the object that you wanna have engraved within the build volume of the machine? So there's probably a few different ways to go about this, but what works best for me so far is to make sure before I even power on the machine that this whole gantry system is pushed all the way forward and that the laser diode is in the front left most position. Then I'm gonna connect the Fecta to my computer, power on the machine. And again, I'm using light burn and then I can put my object within light burn that I want to have etched and then hit the frame button which will help guide the machine into the position that it's actually going to perform the engraving and then I can just manually start positioning the object within that space and if for some reason it ever gets out of alignment I'll just power off the machine reposition everything into the front leftmost position power it back on and then redo the framing and it seems to work just fine and you might be wondering what kind of materials can you actually engrave or cut on and obviously one of the big popular ones is craft wood here or bass wood that comes in a variety of different thicknesses and sizes. You can find these at lots of arts and craft stores, or you can even find thin plywood over in some of your local like Lowe's or Home Depot. But you can also directly engrave on things like stainless steel or aluminum, bamboo, craft paper, even things like cardboard here you can directly engrave on. And also this machine comes with a few samples for you to try out. It provides you with a small test piece of wood that you can engrave and cut through. They also provide you with a small heart dog tag that you can engrave. I ended up engraving a little baby Yoda on there. And they also supply a small strip of leather for you to test out engraving. And, and of course I had to engrave subscribe on there. Also with my test square, this was the very first thing that I went off and tried to engrave, which wasn't exactly the best. I didn't have my settings dialed in. Also, there is a photo that I used on the mobile app to transfer from my phone directly to the engraver, just using those default settings, which were a little too strong in some areas. But one thing that I'm loving about using Lightburn plus the Fecta is that I can easily run off and run some different material tests, where here as a few different scenarios that I've run off and done with the machine, and they take it's going to vary depending on what settings you're using. But here you can see the very first one, I had everything way too high and it was immediately starting to burn through. So I stopped the job, then went ahead and did another run with a different series of power settings here from 40 to 100% power and 50 millimeters per second, all the way up to 300 millimeters per second, which looked pretty good. And then test number three, again, varied that slightly. I went to see if we could dial that in a little bit further with going lower in the power uh, all the way up to 100 and 100 to 300. Not entirely sure what the heck happened right there, but it kind of burned a little bit. Yet again, went and did another series of tests. Again, just varying the settings ever so slightly to try and find the perfect setting option for this cheap basswood or balsa wood that you might be engraving on. And for me, it looks like somewhere around 100% power and 175 millimeters per second worked really well. Also, another thing I never really considered when engraving something is you might want to have a darker engraving versus a lighter or even a deeper versus a less shallow engraving. So what's kind of cool about this test is you can actually feel the difference between some of the engravings that have been made on your test piece. And one thing that I've done a lot of is just using my logo for a whole bunch of different tests just to play around with some of the different settings. This is one of the initial setting tests here. And you can see some examples where I actually went through and cut some of those out as well, not just engraved, but also engraved and cut those out within the wood. Now I have to say my tests with different materials have been really limited. So let me know in the comments down below what sort of materials you'd like to see me start engraving and working with next. I have just been playing a lot with the basswood, balsa wood here, just because it's readily available and easy for me to get a hold of at my craft stores, but would love to try out some other things that you all would like to see me try and engrave on. One thing that I'm excited to start working on, I ordered already are some tiles, some 
small six by six dark slat gray, or is it like a black tile that I wanna try engraving on. And as most of you know, I'm a pretty big fan of making replica props. So I figured why not try to use the Fecta here to make a really recognizable replica prop from a modern show that has gained a lot of popularity here over the last few years. The first thing I need to do is get some of the wood that I wanna use for this project and spray paint it yellow. Now, once the spray paint dried, I ended up using the Fecta to actually trim off the back edge of the board because it was just a little bit too long for the project. And I also used a little bit of masking tape to see what the results might look like. All right, let's see if this worked here. I'm not 100% sure on the settings. Actually, I think it threw. I probably should have, I don't know, done one more pass. Oh, actually that worked, uh, there we go. Maybe I just needed to remove the tape. It actually worked pretty well cutting this three millimeter board down in size to something a little bit more accurate in scale. And I can also reuse that scrap piece of wood to run some more tests of our settings with tape and without tape to see which of the settings is gonna work best for this project. Well, that didn't work exactly right. It sort of worked here. It actually looks fairly decent without the tape applied. With the tape, it just kind of melted the tape a little bit. I think I need to go slower and with more power potentially. All right, so after running a whole bunch of series of different tests, I think I found a setting that I like and I even ran off and did some of the tests running these at two intervals. Basically it goes back over everything twice and I ended up finding that the one interval works just fine and I think at 70 millimeters per second at 90% power is what I'm gonna go for. So let's fire this up. And while this project is engraving, I wanted to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're obviously the makers of this Fecta laser engraver, which you can find over on Kickstarter. The campaign is live for the next few weeks. There are still a number of campaign backing options, everything from the 10 watt to the 20 watt. Plus there are also add on options that you can even look at when picking up one of these engravers for yourself. And I definitely have some upcoming projects that the Fecta will be absolutely perfect for when it comes to being able to engrave and cut out different materials. This turned out so cool. This was, I think like an hour and 15 minutes for this to do this entire engraving there. And again, had it cut off the one end of this board. I'm very happy with how this turned out with doing just a few setting tweaks there and some testing to find out exactly how much power and speed I needed to be able to engrave through the paint directly onto the board here. Now, I could go back through and potentially use some acrylic paint to paint in blue for these letterings, but I might leave it just like this. I also wanted to mention a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here over on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings or my FDM 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And as I mentioned before, if you're interested in more information about the Elegoo Fecta and this laser engraver and the Kickstarter campaign, you can find links to those down below. You'll definitely be seeing me using this more in some upcoming projects. And again, if you have ideas and suggestions on some materials that you'd like to see me try and engrave on, please let me know down below. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.